Most iPhone users miss out on things hiding in plain sight. Not the gimmicks, the stuff that saves real time every day. These are 10 things that I use personally. They're not new, but they may be new to you. And every time I show them, someone always says, why didn't I know that? The other day I was helping someone remove a background from a photo, and this tip saved them a lot of time. In the Photos app, select a photo that you want the background removed. Long press the main subject of the photo and scroll over to select Share, and you can either save the image to Photos with no background to your photo library, or you can share it to Messages, or Notes, or countless other apps, or you can copy and paste it. You'll be using this tip from now on if you haven't already. This next tip is known by many, but do you? A friend needed to email several photos quickly, and this tip was just the ticket. Open Photos, tap on the first photo that you plan to send, and slide it around with one finger, and now keep holding it and use another finger to select all the other photos that you want to send by just tapping them. They will accumulate in a stack and keep a counter for you. Now continue to hold the stack, close the photo app, and open a newly composed email, for example, and drop them there. Boom, that was easy. All the photos are there for you, ready to send. If you found this one useful, click that share button and send it to a friend who needs it. Everyone knows timers, but do you know this one? First, let's add the timer app to the control center by opening control center. Click add a control, search for timer, add it, then long press the timer tile, slide up and down. Now you can select a timer from one minute to two hours without opening the app at all. By the way, let me show you another one of my favorite ways to set timers. All you have to do is simply ask Siri to set a three minute tea timer. And now you have a timer that's named so you won't forget what the timer is for. And don't forget that you can repeat this process over and over again, allowing you to have multiple named timers by using Siri to set all of them for you. Because they are each uniquely named, you'll know what each timer is for. If this helped you, please let me know in the comments below. Another one that you need to be using is this great way to get the most out of your flashlight or torch app. Open the flashlight tile in Control Center or on your lock screen. Then slide the bar up or down, left or right. This is perfect when one level is just too bright in a theater or in a dim restaurant. Now it will remember the setting you like, but you can adjust it next time if you prefer a different setting. And if you like these tips, hit the subscribe button. It's free to do. Here's one I've been using a lot lately, just allowing Siri to work its magic and predict which apps I need next. Long press on a home screen page. Tap the plus or edit at the top of the page. Select add widget and scroll down to the bottom to find Siri suggestions. Select that, then tap Add Widget again. Now you will have this set of eight app suggestions based on your usage patterns. It will predict apps that you are likely to use at a particular time of day. Pretty cool, right? It's like it knows what you're planning to do next. I wasted a lot of time before this one became available in iOS 26. If you've ever been locked out because you changed your password, and you needed to go back to the previous password because you forgot to update everything. Here's the answer. The Passwords app now keeps a history of your password changes for each app. Open the Passwords app, select an app, and see the history list. This would have saved me that time I changed my password, but didn't save it properly. And then I forgot the old password, so I had to go through the time-consuming forgot my password process. Speaking of passwords, this next tip is perfect if you share a few passwords for a few specific apps with your immediate family. It'll keep them from bugging you every time you decide to change your password for that one movie app they're trying to watch. This one is called Shared Groups in Passwords app. Open Passwords. Notice at the bottom, Share Passwords with Family. Click to get started. You choose what you want to share and who to share it with. You'll then see likely family members to share it with, and if not, click Add People and add who you need. Please note that these people must already be in your contacts. Then simply select the apps that you want to share passwords and passkeys for, and it will move those to a family group of passwords, and you're done. In my family, we do this for streaming apps where my wife and children already have profiles set up, such as Disney+, Paramount+, etc. You can do this for any app you choose. And by the way, you can set up multiple groups, such as one for your spouse or significant other and another for your children. It's very flexible. Regarding protection, every parent or grandparent that I've ever showed this one to immediately activates this one. Go to Settings, Accessibility, Guided Access, and toggle this on. 
Now when you open any app, such as a gaming app that your child might enjoy, just triple click the side button. And now you've locked the phone to that app only. They cannot wander around into other apps, preventing them from accidentally deleting emails or apps or making some setting changes. This is perfect for those times when you just need to hand your phone over to someone to let them see what you're showing, even if it's just a website in Safari, and it locks them out from scrolling around on your phone to do more than you intended. To turn off guided access, just triple click again in combination with Face ID and select End. I really like this next setting because I got really tired of apps begging me for ratings. Go to Settings, App Store, In-App Ratings and Reviews and toggle this off. You're not saying no to ratings. You're turning off all the interruptions. Your time is your time. This tip is just solid advice when it comes to your accessories that you may purchase or receive as gifts for your iPhone or for other Apple devices. Charger heat is a battery killer. Non-MFI chargers run hotter on battery cells, and heat destroys capacity over time. MFI stands for Made for iPhone or iPad or iPod, which means their certification guarantees that the charger is compatible with Apple products and will not cause damage, as it has been rigorously tested by Apple. MFI certified products are tuned to power management. If you've ever wondered why two-year-old batteries feel like four-year-old batteries, this is one of the top three reasons. Just look for the MFI certified labels before purchasing your accessories. And speaking of battery life, here's a bonus tip to keep your battery health long term. After you install iOS updates or app updates, restart your phone. And when I say restart, I mean fully shut it down. Don't just do a force reboot. Open Control Center, select the power button at the top right corner, and then slide to power off. Let the screen go dark for about 20 seconds or so just to ensure it's completely powered down. And then start it back up by using the side button. As a good rule of thumb, shut it down once a week to clear the memory and your phone will run faster. Now your iPhone's ready to go. I know it sounds old school, but it clears background services, resets caches, and lets security patches fully apply. I've seen iPhones speed up by seconds just from that one reboot. Think of it like letting your iPhone take a breath after a long day. Every big update is new code running on top of old memory, so let it start fresh. You'll get longer battery life and smoother Bluetooth and Wi-Fi connections almost instantly. There you go. 10 iPhone tips that you may have forgotten or you've never used, or you never knew them. I hope they're helpful to you. If so, hit that like and subscribe. It's free to do. If you've never subscribed before, just hit that subscribe button. A shout out to all my subscribers. I appreciate you. Thank you for all you do for this channel. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to seeing you next time.